On today's Maker Mashup, the Frankenstein 3D printer. Igor, throw the switch! Okay, so we had questions come in. People were asking, I want to build a 3D printer at home, but I don't have a 3D printer to make the 3D printed parts. And those 3D printed parts would look something like this. Matter of fact, this one here, I printed on my Core XY printer design. And this one right here that looks just like it, I printed on this printer right here. So for those of you wondering how you print 3D printed parts without 3D printed parts, you build yourself a Frankenstein monster. And that's exactly what I've got here. So let's talk about this Frankenstein printer, as I call it, and how you can put one together. First, I want to be clear. I think it's much safer. It makes more sense if you just go and find a retailer that can 3D print whatever you want. There's plenty of them online. Uh, libraries now have 3D printers. You can get find 3D printers at local makerspaces. And I'll include a link for makerspaces. Those are worldwide. I suggest you get your 3D printed parts there versus attempting something like this because you've got mains voltage here. You have electronics sitting out. And from a safety standpoint, this is not the best way to go. But it does prove that you can bootstrap a 3D printer and build your own 3D printer using things like wood. I used rope clips. That's these metal clips that are holding the rods in place. And this is just a, a pipe clamp here that's holding on the extruder itself. So you can definitely make one of these. And I'm going to cover how I built this one. But I definitely recommend, for safety reasons, to go ahead and find someone that can 3D print these parts for you. It's just a better way to go. But getting back to bootstrapping this 3D printer, the main things that you print with 3D printed parts, so these, these parts right here, the main things that you're going to do with that are for your motion control system. So as you can see here, I've got the linear rod, and I've also got the lead screw here. These rods I use pillow blocks for. It's all just a matter of setting up the wood and the materials to do the same thing that the plastic is doing. Now, when we look at this print and we see this print, you can tell that it, it doesn't print quite as nicely as a printer that is using uh, printed parts and solid construction framing where this is a little bit of wood, but to the point of building something, you could build this and print this and then print better parts with it. So there's a way and a path to getting that done. And that's what we're going to cover here in this video. So let's get to work and figure out how we build this Frankenstein monster. So I just want to say it one more time. This video is for educational purposes only. Please use caution in assembling a 3D printer like this and exercise safety anytime that you're using mains voltage for a project. These are voltages that can kill you. Never leave a project like this unattended for any reason. Stay safe and proceed at your own risk. So the first step was to go ahead and have an area where we could have the linear rods push off. And this was just a matter of cutting a small piece of wood out of some project board. This is some thin plywood board. Uh, it's probably a slightly smaller than a quarter of an inch thick. And it works really, really well. You just get this at your local hardware store. So we're just going to cut this to size so that way we can have something that will hold the linear rod against the stepper bracket. Now that we have our part, we're just going to add some M3 screws and attach our stepper to the stepper brackets. So we'll need a square piece of plywood you can see there for our carriage. And now I'm just going to measure this and then we're going to cut this piece down to size and we're going to build their left carriage block. This is just a piece of two by four from the big box store. Now we're going to drill some pilot holes here and attach this piece with some screws. Now I'm marking a line here that's just in front of this. So that way we can take this over to the drill press and drill a guide for the rods. These are metric bits we're using here. And what I'm doing is drilling a hole for the guide. You can see here I've got one clean hole drilled. And now what I'm going to do here is attach the lead screw guide and this nut just 
goes right on the top of here. And then we're just gonna screw it in with a couple of metric screws. Once we have that attached, now we're just gonna add our piece of plywood on the back. You can see here there's already drilled a couple of screw holes and this is just to hold everything in place. And then we're gonna take this over to our 3D printer and attach it there. We're gonna also need to mark on here, these are rope clips. And what we're gonna do here is just drill a couple of extra holes in here so that way we can attach these, which are gonna hold the linear rods before we attach it to the printer. This is all part of your X carriage. Now we just slide these through here, and then once they're in place, we can assemble this on the printer, and the rods will slip right through these on the other side, and then we're just gonna attach it with a couple of bolts on the back. Here we are with our linear rods in place and the lead screws, and then we put our two carriages in place. You can see here, I just added a couple of pillow blocks. This is an addition from the standard C201. Now I normally don't use these pillow blocks. I use the 3D printed ones, but we're making this for a printer that doesn't have any plastic parts. So you're gonna need to get some pillow blocks from Amazon or another vendor. And then once we get that done, you're gonna go ahead and attach it to just a regular piece of plywood. This is just the carriage that we're gonna use to attach our hot end. Using one of the stepper brackets, I marked on here the screw holes so that way we can attach the stepper on the left carriage. So I used a few pieces of plywood that I glued together and then I just attached the bolt and put a bearing on the inside here so that way our belt can traverse across our X axis and back around. And then once I checked to make sure the belt was complete, we went ahead and we attached it over on the right side of the printer carriage here. And then we'll just tighten it as easily as we can. You're never gonna get this super tight because it will start to pull the other pieces. So just tight enough that the belt doesn't slip. So what I did with the Y axis was go ahead and take a two by four and I sliced that up four different ways and then went ahead and drilled an eight millimeter hole and another hole for the screw so that way that would fit in there. This is just a metric screw and a standard T-nut and then we attach all four of these to the bed and that gets us our Y axis. Now you can see here this bed is not the same one as the C201. This is actually a bed off another printer because it had the linear blocks on it. You can attach those linear blocks exactly the same, but I was rebuilding this printer anyhow, so I just used the existing bed, but you can certainly attach those same pillow blocks to this linear bed and attach it the same way. Now we're going to attach our nozzle. I just took a standard pipe clamp and then I put a metric screw in here and that metric screw just clamps down to make sure that the nozzle doesn't move otherwise it would just spin within there and we didn't want that but otherwise it holds it just fine. Now that that's all done the next step here is to just install the electronics and those just mount on the board here. The fan in that I pointed straight down for the part cooling fan as I didn't really have a duct and it was working fine enough for the 3D printed parts that I was doing. You can see I just used another little piece of wood here and then this is going to be the belt for the Y axis. All that I did here was put this into place and then once that was there, wrap the belt around it and the stepper is attached with another one of those stepper brackets. After I had that all done, the last step was to just go ahead and attach the end stops to the blocks of wood that were already there and then fire up the printer. You can see here it's printing just fine and the results is pretty good. This block looks exactly like the one that's printed next to it, which was printed on a pretty nice Core XY printer. Overall, you can see the quality is a little bit less, but this is pretty good considering everything on here is made from wood. So one thing I wanna cover real quick are some tips should you decide to go down this route. First, if you start building one of these, remember everything is temporary. That's why you see cable ties here. I had to redo this right left side here about four times before I got it right. So don't, don't feel like you're failing because you can't get it right the first time. Uh, it took a number of tries before I got one that worked well. Uh, tolerances are going to be off, so you may have to rebuild these a couple of times to make them work. And then when you do get it printing, 
print it slow. Make sure that everything you do is nice and slow. You don't want to go fast. The wood doesn't tolerate the same type of jerking that a 3D printer does. So it's very, very key that when you do get it printing, that you print slow. So we're printing now our second print from our 3D printer that we bootstrapped by using wood and parts from our local hardware store. And with that, it's gonna be the end of our video today. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you get notifications of our new videos. And please leave us comments. We'd love to hear back from you on this particular Frankenstein build that we put together here and whether or not you're gonna to attempt to build something like this yourself. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.